Let the bandsman come through. Off we go. Count your blessings, men, men, one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, men, men, one by one. Right, first one. When the fun lands below to our tent and stone, when the land is coming, it's taking for his star. And so many lessons that you fun by one. And you will surround you what the Lord has done. Now come on. Come to the blessings in the sun. It's a lovely morning here this morning, the sun shining, but do you know up in Skegness, <laughs> this morning the temperature there is 78 degrees, <laughs> with, a, with a promise next year of being even hotter. <laughs> You'll be pleased to know Commissioner, we had a show of hands last night, all those who were coming to Skegness, and we're going to have one now. Who's coming to Skegness next year? There we are. What do you think of that? <laughs> Marvellous. And we've got the we've got the sunshine laid on the whole week. Now we're going to have another song together, and uh, it's going to be. I had it there a moment ago. Forty-four. Forty-four. Five two nine. Five two nine for the orchestra. <laughs> and we'll start off with the chorus, please. The day of victory is coming. And one or two might be like to be bound for Cane and Shore at the same time. Off we go. The day of victory is coming, is coming by and by. When to the cross of Calvary, all nations will survive. With soldiers in the army, we'll fight until we die. For the day of victory is coming by and by. Verse 1. March on salvation, soldiers, march forward to the fight. have the last verse when we get to the chorus we'll have a snowstorm you know what I mean don't you off we go on the last verse then 
Though some would try to crush us, we're rising every day. And so every we can see our friends will have the sway. The geriatrics. That, that was actually that was in um, that was a salute to me. <laughs> One or two of you thought I was in it, didn't you? Yes, I know you did. Well, let's have the chorus first, then, and we'll all sing. Then we'll go through the verses. Number fifteen. Love is wonderful. God's love is wonderful. Montreal Citadel. Now I've been to Montreal Citadel lots of times myself and conducted the band there. Well now this morning here's a camp band. If you want to join in any time and sing, you, you're quite welcome, we shan't mind. That'll be right, will it Mr Williams? I don't know. No audition. No. Montreal
Now we're going to sing together once more, and uh, the one we're going to have <laughs> I've lost the page now, would you believe it? <laughs> Number 68, 756. <laughs> Away we go, one and two. You can tell out the sweet story. You, yes, you. Somebody's right will be brighter. Somebody's care will be lighter. You can tell out the sweet story. You, yes, you. Tell out the wonderful story. Tell it wherever you go, tell of the King and His glory, tell how He loved the soul. This is the story most precious, Jesus has died to redeem us. You can tell of the sweet story, you, yes, you, you can tell of the sweet story. And the last verse, wonderful story of Jesus, tell every single song, wonderful message of mercy, Jesus can make them all, still flows a wonderful river, from every sin to deliver, you yes, you, you can tell out the sweet story, you yes, you, somebody's life will be lighter, you can tell out the sweet story. Well, now, when the British Commissioner comes to your corps or to your division, someone gets up and says very nicely how pleased you are to see him, and then you all clap very respectfully and uh, very nicely. Now, but not when you come to Butlins. When we welcome the Commissioner at the Butlins, we have three cheers. Three cheers for the Commissioner. Hip hip! Hip hip! Hip hip! Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, that was magnificent. Thank you very much, Colonel, and thank you very much, each one of you. I'm very moved, really, when I, I look at your faces and the great number of people who are here together this morning. It's a wonderful sight. Wonderful. I suppose that there are few gatherings like ours, so many people coming and being one heart, one soul, one mind, having the same sense of joy, and that not just because we, we are friendly to each other, we have certainly been that, but because we share in a tremendous hope for our own lives and for the life of people around us. This has been a week of fun, I'm sure. I just miss Biggles. I'm very sorry about that. <laughs> I'll, never, I'll never forgive me for that. At least I'll never forgive the general 
for having deprived me of Beagles. I'm a fan for everything which has to do with planes, starting with the Spitfire and finishing with the Hurricane. <laughs> so de being deprived of Beagles has been a very, very great grief to me. But uh, it has been a week of fun, I'm quite sure, and a week of great fellowship. When we started this week, we prayed about it, we hoped that the Lord will give us that kind of sense of belonging together. And when I look at you, I feel that this is so. I don't think I've ever seen any person by sitting by himself or by herself. Yesterday, when I came back from London, I saw one or two people and I said, are you just by yourself here? Oh, no, 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 I'm just waiting for my people to come. So I hope that at the end of this week, no one is going back to the place he came from with a feeling, well, nobody cared for me. I think some of you came and you've been surprised because God has been so near to you. I was talking with somebody not so long ago in the campus here and the person said to me, well, right from the first meeting, I knew God wanted to touch my life. And I suppose that for many of us, it has been that way. What a wonderful week. Of course, there's a great sense of gratitude in our hearts for the people who have made this week possible. And uh, I would like to mention in a special way, of course, the Chief Secretary, Major Albert Wall, and uh, the Guardians of the Peace. Some of them look a bit more tired than they, used, than they were last week, I can tell you. I know them pretty well, and when I look at their gaunt faces, I can see that they paid a heavy price for being at Butlins. Mind you, next year they were the first to, to be here. Let me just say a last word, because we are, we're going to have possibilities to meet again tonight in the Thanksgiving meetings, and those are going to be very wonderful. Thinking about you, m seeing you march past with the bands, with your songs, with the flags, with the tambourines, I thought of three words of Jesus, which seem to summarize to me the whole of Christian life. The first word is Jesus saying, come, come to me. I suppose that most of us this morning, we know what it means to come to Jesus, to establish a personal link between him and us. We came to him, we were drawn to him, we were attracted to him. And we have discovered that what he promised to do, he has done. He said that if we came to him, he would give us rest. And there is peace in our hearts. He said that if we came to him, and if we drank, streams of living waters would flow from us. And I think quite a number in our midst today could say this is true. Jesus said that if we came to him, we would find life. And this is what we possess. The second word which Jesus said, of course, was go. He never intended his people to be selfish. He never wanted the people, the Christians, his disciples, to be secluded, as it were, in a little room together, enjoying themselves. He wanted all the doors to be open. And you remember on the day of, uh, of his resurrection, he just came through the closed doors, but he made sure that the doors of the church would never remain closed. He said, you go, go, go and tell your friends. The man who was healed was told by Jesus, go back and tell the great things that God has done for you. Go, go into all the world and make sure that the people hear the good news. It's a tremendous good news, and it is more a good news today than it ever was before. People around us are thirsty for peace. What they mean by peace is something far remote and seems to depend on so many things, on statesmen, on money, on weapons. We know that peace is for today, at once, in our hearts, and it can spread from each one of us to those around us, go. But then the last word which Jesus said was follow, and follow me. After having said to Peter that he was to go into the whole world, Jesus said to him, follow me. For the simple reason that where we go, and you are going back to Scarborough, or going back to Manchester, or to Scotland, or to the Isle of Wight, where you are going back, Jesus will be there already. Jesus has prepared the way. And Jesus has prepared the works. And Jesus knows exactly what attitude we have to take in order to be exactly the kind of people we ought to be. So Jesus says, it's not complicated. You don't have to make rules. You don't have to make a program. You just follow me. I'll tell you moment by moment what you have to do. I think that the greatest result of Butlins 
It's not only that we look back upon wonderful memories, some of them seem to be consigned in millions and millions of photographs. Well, that's the old fashioned now, they are consigned in videos now. But all those memories are there. That's what a good thing, but the real memories are in our hearts, aren't they? In the new strength, in a new hope, in a new energy, in a new joy, in a new purpose. And I think the whole of the British territory is going to be touched tomorrow and Sunday, touched by all the people going back from this focal point to their core, to their outpost, and bringing with them something of the tremendous sense of joy we have uh, enjoyed together. Now may the Lord bless you. Once again, the camp is not yet over, but this is a wonderful opportunity, possibly the only one. We have to be all together in this place. I know that Colonel uh, Bearcroft has done a lot of publicity for Skegness, so... Uh, <laughs> I'm sure that Skegness is going to be too small next year. <laughs> So, if we don't see and meet face to face, well, it's uh, next year in Skegness. <laughs>
So I told her, I said to Trevor, you know, this is the way we're going to do it, Trevor, and I would like you to do the same. So he saluted and said he would. So, <laughs> and, and that was quite unusual, actually. <laughs> but we marched into Buckingham Palace in the forecourt there, and we were all looking, you know, like tin soldiers, as smart as we could. And Trevor was standing there, and all of a sudden he heard a great crowd of people outside the, the, um, the bars there looking in. I'm not sure whether they look in or we look out. I couldn't quite make up my mind. But anyway, they were all looking in, and we suddenly heard a lady going, Psst! Psst! <laughs> Trevor! Trevor! Well, Trevor had been told to look forward, so he didn't. He just kept looking straight to the front. Little while later, Psst! Trevor! Trevor! Still, Trevor looked at the front. A third time it happened. Psst! Trevor! Trevor looked round. And the lady put her arm through the railings and said, Butlins! <laughs> Even more important the Queen, wasn't it? <laughs> well, let's have the last verse and the Chief Secretary is going to bring to us the prayer for this morning. Great things he hath taught us, great things he has done. Off we go. Great things he hath taught us, great things he hath done, and great are rejoicing through Jesus the Son, but purer and higher and greater will be. I think the commissioner is still one together, shall we? Oh God, our Heavenly Father, we do indeed praise thy name this morning. We would praise thee for the glorious day, the wonderful sunshine that cheers our hearts. We would pra praise thee for the surroundings with wit in which we have been this week, the sea and the fresh air, those many things which speak of thy love in nature. And then too we would praise thee for the material gifts, the food we've enjoyed, for health and strength, so many of these things. And yet, dear Lord, this morning we would thank thee most of all for Jesus our Saviour, in whose name we gather at this moment, bound by ties of Christian love one to another, ties that need not be broken even when we move away from this place. And so, O oh Lord, we thank thee. Thank thee for Jesus, for his love toward us, for his dying for us on Calvary. And we pray that we may be even better witnesses to him because of this time that we have spent in fellowship. Now be with us, we pray, throughout the rest of this day. Hear our prayers. We ask these things in thy name. Amen. <laughs>